Now here we've got these deep casseroles, which I, I hardly ever do pots with lids on, if I can help it, because I'm not very good at getting the lids to fit. But that looks alright, I think. It hasn't bubbled. Another honey pot. Not sure about these. I think these casserole things have come out well. I may have to jiggle this around a bit. I did each one with a different animal on, or fowl. So what, there's a hare, a guinea fowl, a hen, and a cockerel. And I had to do one on each side, so they took ages, like jugs. So I'm going to charge a fortune for them, because they took so long to do. But they've come out very well. I'm very pleased. Great stuff. Elspeth Soper comes from an Anglo-Canadian family and grew up in Oxford. She did a foundation course at Bristol before moving on to the then School of Art at Farnham, where she did a degree in ceramics. On leaving, she moved a few miles down the road, living and working for seven years at the famous Recolsion Pottery, A. Harrison's son. It has closed its door now, but it was one of the last of the old English country potteries, passing the skills from one generation to another making earthenware flower pots, chimney pots, in fact all manner of pots and receptacles for house, farm and garden. In 1984 she followed her good friend the painter Jenny Jones, who had also been at Farnham, and moved to Shropshire and set up home in Jubilee Cottage on the Woolley Estate, negotiating with her landlord Lord Forrester to build a pottery and kiln shed in her back garden. By 1985 it was all built, much of the construction work done by herself and surrounded by chickens, geese, ducks and guinea fowls, she began to pot. At first it was undecorated earthenware pots of the type she had made at Recklesham, but after a chance meeting with a Hungarian potter one summer in Canada, she became interested in Eastern European styles of decorating. Actually, I think it was uh, while I was 
still working at Recklesham that I spent a summer in Canada and met Steve Baxo who's a Hungarian potter who lives on the Bruce Peninsula in Ontario in Canada and he had a collection of Hungarian peasant pottery which I loved and he also gave me this book about this Hungarian potter Cantor Sandor which is entirely in Hungarian so I can't understand a word of it but I love the pots and looking at them again now I, I just think I mean I think that's just gorgeous this is gorgeous they they sort of resonated and I felt an excitement about them a, a connection with them which was more than I felt for English slipwear, much as I love it. It's quite interesting that, that I felt, felt much more of a connection with these pots. And, but at the same time, they, they reminded me of um, a lot of other things that I loved, like this, this sort of thing looks very much like Pennsylvanian Dutch American pottery to me and somewhere there's yes this pot here uh, reminds me of Chinese pottery that I very much like from a particular dynasty I can't remember which dynasty and somewhere there's a pot that makes me think of Tudor slipwear. I just I love the decoration. I love the shape of that particular pot as well. Um, I remember using some very specific things, motifs at Recklesham. I remember using this motif and this motif uh, on the rims of plates and I, I loved I loved the sort of formalness of it I think and I loved the combination of the scraffito and the slip trailing and the dots and the solid colour so it was it was altogether very inspiring I remember using this bird specifically trying to copy this bird on a dish I made um, but interestingly I realized that um, in fact the, the, the birds although this was sort of an, an initial inspiration the birds that I do now are, are quite different sort of fatter and more solid but it's it's terribly exciting to look at these pots again after all this time because um, I do love them and it makes me realize how um, you know I love I love um, English traditional music and Scottish music but what I really really love is Eastern European sort of peasant music, gypsy music, and Eastern European Jewish music, klezmer music, I just love. I don't know whether I've got, I've got this theory that I've got some Eastern European Jewish blood in my ancestry. And one day I'm going to look it up and see if I'm right. Because I feel, I, I just feel such a connection with with this sort of thing I use this motif here quite a lot on the rims of plates and things now although I don't remember noticing it particularly when I was first looking at this book and it's a very common motif that lots of potters have used and used today as well